Hey guys, welcome to the Quad Method. In this video, we're going to be talking about double strokes. Double strokes is something you see in every piece of music nowadays, and it is essential to learn how to do. You see them in rolls, paradiddles, uh, hybrid flame rudiments, you see them everywhere. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how to play them, but more importantly, how to play them well and produce good sounds. So stick around and hope you enjoy. So those of you that have been playing drums for a year, year and a half have probably learned how to play double strokes or diddles to some degree. But oftentimes we don't really know what makes good double strokes from not so good double strokes. Here's an example of somewhat decent double strokes. As you can see, the bead moves pretty smoothly between the first note and the second note where both rebound up. And the sound quality is, for the most part, consistent note to note. You'll also notice that it all sounds pretty smooth rhythmically and there's not a whole lot of fluctuation uh, of the rhythmic spacing. Sometimes we forgo improving these characteristics so that we can play diddles faster or that we can get to playing scrapes sooner. But these characteristics all translate from one drum to the arounds, or you know, single drum to scrapes. And those of you that struggle on playing rebounded double strokes now probably find it pretty difficult to play scrapes. Now here's an example of not so good double strokes. As you can see, the way the bead travels is kind of reflective of how it sounds. Every attack sounds like an accent and this every second note sounds like a tap. We don't want this. The biggest tendency I usually see amongst kids when they're learning how to play double strokes is that they put too much emphasis on the first notes where they have really heavy attacks or whether they think that putting more power into the, uh, down, the first initial downward motion is going to help them produce a stronger second note. When in fact, it's kind of counterintuitive to do it that way. What you need to do is take a little bit of velocity and a little bit of edge off the first note and put that into the second note in order to even out the sound quality between the first note and the second note. All right, enough talking about that. Let's go ahead and get started. So we wanna start off at the slow tempo. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to magnify and define how we want the faster tempos to sound. So if we are articulate and consistent at the slow tempo, it is going to translate as we speed it up and take it faster and faster and faster. So all you're gonna do is play two strokes on each hand, two full strokes, all wrist, just like the first two notes on eight on a hand or eight, eight, 16. There's not much to it, that's just all it is. Now, as you speed it up, try to retain that same wrist usage for as long as possible while staying relaxed. The more wrist you can use, the bigger your sound is going to be and the more control you're gonna have over your rhythmic spacing. But once it gets to a point where you just start feeling like you're tensing up and you're using too much muscle, that's when we gotta start introducing finger support. So if you don't know what finger support is, it's basically just being able to incorporate these guys with your strokes. So when we start incorporating finger, what this allows us to do is it allows us to produce two notes out of one complete stroke. So usually when you go down up, that produces one note. Well, when we, when we add in the ability to use our fingers with our wrist, it allows us to get two notes, one, two. And usually when I teach kids that don't know how to play double strokes, well, it's, it's more because they don't know how to use their fingers. So let's go ahead and talk about that a little bit. So we're gonna introduce this thing called drop catch. Some people call it push pull, but I like to call it drop catch and you'll see why in just a second. But what this is, is a tool to help you understand how to use your back fingers in conjunction with your wrist. And it is your job to figure out how much of this mechanic you use or you need to use at varying tempos. So to start, we're going to put our bead in playing position and we're going to rotate our wrist up to about vertical. From here, we're going to throw our wrist down through the head and we're gonna drop all our fingers. This is where the drop part comes in. You're gonna drop the uh, back three fingers and leave just the fulcrum on. By doing this, we're gonna allow the stick to rotate around our fulcrum back up after the first downward stroke. Keep in mind, you want to follow through with the wrist and you don't want it to bounce back up. The second part of drop catch is where you catch the stick. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna close the back three fingers as fast as possible. Now from there, you're gonna follow the bead back up with your wrist so that you end up in the starting position. If we put these two pieces together, we get one nice smooth motion. This is the drop catch mechanic, and this will be the basis of how to play medium tempo double strokes. Make sure you learn how to do this on both your right hand and your left hand. So once you get that complete, now you just gotta kind of 
you know, finesse it a little bit and figure out how much of that mechanic you need to use at different tempos. At the very slow tempos, you're not going to be using very much of it, but as you kind of get closer to the faster tempos, you're going to be using more back finger support. And once you start getting into rolls and fast rolls, you kind of, you don't use very much of it because you start relying on your fulcrum. But a personal piece of advice for me is make sure you're still trying to utilize as much wrist as possible. Wrist is the hinge that's going to allow you to articulate more and to really, uh, throw the stick into the head. The double stroke idea and the drop catch mechanics or the back finger support mechanics, that all applies to pretty much everything you play, whether it's paradiddles, paradiddles, rolls, flam drags, all of these ideas come f or stem from being able to apply your fingers with your wrist. Once you figure out this mechanic at the forte height, then you can start working your way down to the tap height and see if you can get your fingers to work for you at the tap height. A couple of good exercises that you guys can uh, use to help improve your double strokes are just any type of triple stroke exercise like the uh, double stroke builder I included in the Google Drive and any type of syncopated double beat exercise. Those tend to help a lot. Another thing that you could uh, use to help you figure out how to use your fingers is learn how to use how to use. Yeah. Another tool you can use to help you learn how to use your fingers better is finger yoga. Finger yoga is a great way to build strength and build uh, functionality into your fingers. I'll make a separate video on finger yoga, but if you're interested in that, um, check that out. It's something that I don't think a lot of people do, but it is great for strengthening your fingers. And don't forget the characteristics that make good double strokes. Make sure you keep those in mind as you're trying to improve, because in the end, it doesn't matter if you do it differently than how I, you know, how I teach it or how your instructor teaches it. Honestly, in the end, is if you can make it sound good, then you're golden. That's really what you want. If you can make it sound uh, consistent with uh, consistent sound quality, if you can have consistent note spacing, and if you have good rebound, a consistent relaxed sense of rebound. Those are the key characteristics of good double strokes. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And if I could help you guys out with uh, any more definitions or anything like that, um, let me know. I know I've used some terminology that you guys might not be too familiar with, but if you have any questions, uh, I'll be f happy to help. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.